Nowadays, every person should secure their details from the cyber thieves. So, every site provides a username and a password for each and every individual user to secure their account to prevent their details from the cyber trespassers. Such kind of protection in the internet is known as cyber security. The authorization to access the cyber account is known as user authentication. Due to the development of technology, now a person may need to have the user authentication even to enter some places. Sendel is a chief scientist at the cyber security firm called Research and Development Board of Cyber Security. He took his son, Mani, to his office with a special permission during Mani's summer vacation. While entering Sendel's cabin, access Sendel used door. the fingerprint access system to open the door. Mani wondered about the process of such advanced locking technology. So he tried his fingerprint to open the door, but it didn't open. Then Sendel used his access to let him in. Mani asked the reason behind the access to enter. So Sendel started explaining about the user authentication. Every cyber system needs a secured setup to protect the information it possesses. To prevent any data theft and unauthorized access, user authentication becomes necessary. Since the cyber security protocols are needed to check the user even for their own authentication, and secure access. It provides username and password. Both are unique and classified for each user. Thus, the user details are secured. In Unix, we are unable to see typing passwords. Similarly, we are able to see only stars or dots while typing passwords in most of the accessing options. Nowadays, we can protect our computer by enabling the user authentication settings. However, early personal computers did not have any login procedure. Money was curious and eager to know more about the user authentication process. So, Sendel started explaining about the types of user authentication. There are three types of user authentications. The first one is using a username and password for login. It is a widely used method for accessing any data. The password must have symbols and case variations to make the password strong enough. The typing password will be displayed as asterisks or dots, even to the user to protect the password from peeping toms. In this method, while creating the account, User details are gathered for verifying the user's authentication and also used to access in case they forget their password or authentication code. If the user forgets the password, then the account recovery questions which were set by the user during the creation of the account will be prompted. Similarly, mobile number verification, mail ID verification, and typing the correct captcha also used to protect and access the account and user details. The server which stores the preset details from the user analysis the entered details ranking. with its record and respond based on the result. Then, Sendel shared a password with Money and asked Money to open an Office PC which ran on Linux OS. Money tried but could not gain entry. Then Sendel showed him how to access the system by entering the password with the exact format. Sendel explained to Money that the authentication protocol used in this type of access is known as CHAP, that is Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. CHAP is a more secure procedure for connecting to a system than the PAP, that is Password Authentication Procedure. Impressed by this, Money is eager to know how CHAP works. So, 
Sendhil started elaborating about the working of CHAP. After the connection is made, the server sends a challenge message to the connection requester. The requester responds with a value obtained by using a one-way hash function. The server checks the response by comparing it with its own calculation of the expected hash value. If the values match, the authentication is acknowledged. Otherwise, the connection is usually terminated. At any time, the server can request the connected party to send a new challenge message. Because CHAP identifiers are changed frequently, an authentication can be requested by the server at any time. CHAP provides more security than PAP. RFC 1334 defines both CHAP and PAP. Then Money asked about PAP to Sendil. So Sendil queried to Money whether he can remember about Sendil's work on the previous night at home. Money nodded yes. Then Sendil sat at another PC and access the system, which is at home via his office computer. He entered the username and password and obtained all the required data to his office system from his home PC. Money was stunned and asked how Sendil did that. Sendil described that it is possible with the help of PAP technology. PAP, that is Password Authentication, which uses a password to authenticate a user. PAP is used by point-to-point -point protocol to validate users before allowing them access to server resources. Almost all network operating system remote servers support PAP. Money kept looking back and forth between the two systems Sindal used and was perplexed about its UI. Seeing Money's confused look, Sendil explained that the current system has Windows OS and the previous system has Linux OS and also explained about Windows having its own UA protocol called as MSCHAP, that is Microsoft CHAP, similar to Linux UA protocol. MSCHAP is a proprietary version of CHAP used by servers running IIS, that is, Information Internet Services of Microsoft Windows Server. Then, Sendil continued to illustrate more about the types of user authentications. The second authentication type is by using any physical object like a card. For example, ATM cards, ID cards, credit and debit cards. In this, ID cards bearing unique magnetic barcodes for each user based on their authentication priority, which is used to access the source and also used to identify each user. Rest of the cards, including ATM cards, need four digit PIN number to access. That PIN number will be provided by the respective bank. Initially, an user can change the PIN number as per the user's wish. To enhance the security, Bank provides an SMS alert to the users for every swipe of the ATM cards. These security setups are used to prevent someone from using a lost or stolen card. Such kind of information laid in plastic cards come in two varieties. They are magnetic stripe cards and chip cards. Magnetic stripe cards hold about 140 bytes of information written on a piece of magnetic tape glued to the back of the card. This information can be read out by the terminal and sent to the central computer of the respective bank. To avoid duplication in these cards, hologram stickers are used. The third type of UA is by measuring the physical characteristics of the user. This technology is called biometrics. For example, Usage of fingerprints, voice analyzing, and retina analyzing, etc.
Similar to other types of authentication, a typical biometrics system also has two parts, enrollment and identification. During enrollment, the user's characteristics are measured and the results digitized. Then the significant features are extracted and stored in a record associated with the user. The record can be kept in a central database, that is, for logging into a remote computer or stored on a smart card that the user carries around and inserts into a remote reader. It is known as enrollment. The other part is identification. The user shows up and provides a login name. Then, the system makes the measurement again. If the new values match the ones sampled at enrollment time, the login is accepted. Otherwise, it is rejected. Money marveled at the biometrics technology when Sendel explained. Sendel then moved on to the hacking types or attacks where money was all excited. There are two types of attacks. They are passive attacks and active attacks. In passive attacks, the perpetrators or cyber thieves monitoring transmissions to obtain information. If we take active attacks, they involve some modification of the data stream or the creation of a false data stream. Then, Money asked another doubt to Sendel. Is there any protection between the user and database transaction and communication? Sendel replied yes and told that there are some set of rules for transaction and communication on the internet called Internet Protocol, that is IP, which is protected by IPsec, that is Internet Protocol Security. It is a protocol suit for securing Internet Protocol communication by authenticating and encrypting each IP packets of a communication session. IPsec is an end-to-end -end security scheme operating in the Internet layer of the Internet Protocol suit. It can be used in protecting data flows between a pair of hosts, that is, host-to-host, -host, between a pair of security gateways, that is, network-to-network, -network, or between a security gateway and a host, that is, network to host. IPsec is a set of protocols used to support secure exchange of packets at the IP layer. IPsec supports two encryption modes. They are transport and tunnel. Transport mode encrypts only the data portion of each packet, but leaves the header untouched. The more secure, Tunnel mode encrypts both the header and the data portion. When IPsec is implemented in a firewall or router, it provides strong security whose application is to all traffic crossing this perimeter. Traffic within a company or work group does not incur the overhead of security related processing. IPsec is below the transport layer, that is, TCP, UDP and is thus transparent to applications. There is no need to change the software on a user or server system when IPsec is implemented in the firewall or router. 